The, hi, I'm Kristen Phillips, I'm principal at Queensnode, and uh, invited Mark here today to see all the cool stuff we're doing with technology. So thanks for the invitation to be here today, Kristen. I've really enjoyed our, our chance to uh, have some really in-depth conversation mm -hmm. and, of course, to see what's happening in your school. And uh, I have to say I'm really impressed with um, your staff and everything that's happening uh, here at the school just to see the level of engagement and and I know you've you've shared some of the uh, uh, changes that you've made mm -hmm. at the school I'm, I'm anxious to um, capture that and share that um, so maybe we could just talk through a mm -hmm. couple of questions here uh, so in terms of changing the culture on the staff maybe you could share a little bit about the journey that you've um, gone through since arriving mm -hmm. here at the school well I think uh, Queen's Mount staff um, it was lucky in that they they already liked each other. Um, they liked to work together, and they um, they're a friendly group of people. And I think with any staff, teachers really do want to learn new things. I don't really buy into that whole um, you know teachers are lazy or they don't want to change or they don't want to move their practice. Um, but I think that you have to create a culture where trying new things is is okay and it's risk-free so uh, they had begun to do some things um, they were they had already belonged to the innovative practices when I arrived here uh, three Septembers ago uh, but it was a fairly traditional model of teaching and uh, so just I do a lot of things by the way so lots of casual conversations get an idea of what's going on we do everything in teams so uh, all decisions are made by teams. If you want to buy books, it has to be a de team decision. When we have staff meetings, they're in teams. Uh, so getting staff to start to work together. Uh, but I think the biggest thing for changing the culture of school is creating a sense of, and what I say is, try something new, no one will die. They think we should get t-shirts. Um, <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> Would they be black? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're put the dips on okay. the other side. Um, but... This idea of giving teachers permission to look at their practice, uh, identify what things maybe they're not happy with or they'd like to try something different, mm -hmm. giving them some ideas to do some, I some different ideas. Usually I give way too many ideas um, or, or provide too many resources so that it's not a, a must-do. Uh, we talk about it, we try it, we come back and see how it worked. And if it doesn't work, well, that's okay. You just try something else. It, right. it, it's not a. Um, it's not me, the principal, saying uh, none of you are doing this, and the we all need to do student voice and choice, or we all need to do a workshop approach, or we all need to do problem solving in mathematics. It's really more of a where are you at in your practice? What would you like to do next? giving them some support to try those things and then allowing them to muck about. And I say to them, you know, it's not going to work at first. Be prepared for that. Um, that's the learning, though, so, right? so that's the learning. Yeah. The other piece I think that is important is that I do have a lot of curriculum knowledge. So one of the things I try to do when I first go into a building is, is make some suggestions around ideas that I know are going to work tomorrow. You get a lot more buy-in when the ideas work and you can see it work the very next day. So that's helpful when I have the curriculum knowledge because I have enough experience, I'm kind of old and I can do that. Um, and then people, once a, a couple of things that they've tried new really worked and they see that their kids are more engaged or their kids are learning more, then you can just sit back. Like right now, I don't have to do nearly as much as I did at the beginning because they just... Now they're just willing to try ideas and share them with each other. Right. I don't have to do very much. So the, the culture that you've desired has now become a norm in the school, really. Yeah, it's just the way we do things. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. that's fantastic. Now, one of the things that struck me on our, our classroom walkabout this morning was really the seeing sort of your approach to using the technology, thinking about the allocation model and so on. <laughs> so uh, it struck me really as... Uh, I think you termed it as free flow, but I'm mm -hmm. wondering if you can just share a little bit more about that because it really seemed to be working well in, in this context. Yeah. So we have a fair amount of technology. We traded in after my first year here. We got rid of the computer lab. Um, by that time, we had changed 
a lot of our pedagogy. So having Chromebooks and not going to the computer lab as an event right. didn't make sense to anybody anymore. So one of the things I think you have to do is you can't just introduce technology and expect pedagogy to change. It's much easier if you're doing it simultaneously mm -hmm. so that um, the two things mesh together. So it wasn't too hard to get rid of the computer lab because it was it didn't make sense to the way we were teaching right. anymore. So we got a lot more Perfect. Chromebooks. We, we did the IEP project with the board, so they gave us some Chromebooks. I used a lot of money. Anytime I have money left over at the end of the year, I buy more Chromebooks. I bore my iPad. So we have a fair number. I honestly don't know how many we have, and I don't know where they are in the building um, because I'm not in charge of that. So... I don't even really know how the teachers organize that. They tend to just organize it themselves and they share amongst each other. Um, so you've empowered them really to really move the technology around as they need it. Yeah, so I don't have anything to do with it. You don't sign anything out. Um, it could be that maybe at one point somebody told me that they were going to say, okay, these grade 7 classes each got 15 Chromebooks and such, but I don't really know if that's true. I just know that they all seem to, to manage that on their own because everybody does it and everybody understands how it's useful and there is enough so that's I think if there's a, a scarcity it would be much more difficult mm -hmm. um, but you have to have enough so that it's manageable to happen and when they come and they say look I had a teacher last year who was out in a portable and she said it's just really hard for me to use the Chromebooks um, because it's hard to come in and borrow them all the time so I said oh we'll, we'll just buy you 10 because I knew she wasn't gonna be in the portable forever so we right. just buy 10 and now she's happy and she borrows the rest, even though 10's not enough. And now they're back in the regular population. So they just kind of move them about themselves, and it seems to work. I know sometimes I go to administrator meetings, and they'll say, and your job is to, you know, make sure that the technology is, is shared and there isn't any infighting or something. And I just sit there, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, we don't have any infighting about the technology. It just happens. Well, what struck me when we were in the various classrooms was it just seemed to me that, you know, in, in a, a particular context where perhaps every student needed one, that seemed to have been arranged. In another scenario, students were sharing devices. Mm -hmm. In some cases, students were choosing whether or not they needed to device. So to me, it was really obvious that the teachers had collaborated on how this particular moment in time needed to work and they sorted it out, which is really fantastic. Apparently do they do. It's not a thing. I, th right. I think that's important is that when I walk around the building, the technology is like the papers and pencils. So it's just how we do school. It's not, right. it's not an event. It's not a thing. So some kids might be on their own devices. Some kids might be using an iPad. Some kids might be using a Chromebook. Some kid might be sitting at the teacher's desktop. Some kids might have gone to Spec Ed to use a desktop because they needed that. Some kids sure. have C equipment. Some kids are writing in a notebook. And they're all just okay with that. And even the kids don't fight over the technology. Like, it's just part of how we do school. Yeah, well, that's fantastic. Now, I know in our walkabout today, you shared uh, uh, a few strategies that you, you, that you had uh, used to encourage staff to experiment. I wonder if there's maybe one or two that you'd like to, to share in our conversation here. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the things is that as the, the principal, I tend to think of myself more like the head teacher as opposed to the principal. Really, I don't like being a principal that much, you know, the the budget and the paperwork and student discipline. I can do it, but it's not my favorite part. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important that my staff knows that I think that teaching is really fun and cool. And I try to be involved in that as much as possible. So I will co-teach. Uh, yesterday a teacher invited me in and said, you know, can you talk to some of the novel groups while I do this? And he's not having a TPA, he's not trying to impress me, he just knows that I'm available when needed. Right, um, fantastic. So I think that that's a really important piece is to be seen not as the... I'm sort of one of the teachers, 
I mean, they know I'm their principal. They do. But I'm one of the teachers, or at least I think of myself as one of the teachers, more so than outside of the teaching profession. Right. So, so I think that has been very... team and collaboration. Yeah, and, um, and I model things. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll teach as well, and um, I don't know the technology as much, but I try and make sure that in every staff meeting we have a... Um, like if we're doing an activity and I know that Padlet, for example, would be really good, mm -hmm. then I'll introduce that and sure. remind it. And then the other thing I'll do is when I see teachers using technology for a particular idea or any other teaching idea, I'll write about it in the weekly or I will talk about it at a staff meeting or I'll say to one teacher, oh, you should see what so-and-so is doing. And so my job is kind of to make all of those connections between the classrooms so that it's not so isolating. Um, and then they just they just do it after, by themselves too a lot and have anything to do with that. Yeah, well, that's fantastic. Well, you've certainly uh, uh, shared a lot of strategies that I think mm -hmm. resonate well in mm -hmm. terms of the multi-dimensional nature of, mm -hmm. of your role and uh, the importance of being that uh, curriculum leader mm -hmm. in the building. That's fantastic. I've really enjoyed my time here today, well, and thanks for coming. Uh, I certainly look forward to a future visit. You can come anytime you want. Just drop in. Thanks. I look forward to that. <laughs> okay. Great.